The PG era of the WWE is over. Well, in actuality, it's been over since about 2014, although the exact end date is widely disputed, not undisputed. Now, throughout this era, swearing was a no-no, blood was banned, and when you heard someone refer to puppies, well, they were talking about a pair of cute and cuddly animals. <laughs> Musically speaking, even though the in-ring product was now geared towards being family-friendly, from time to time, you could still rock out with your sock out, because I'm I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes. And won't you please subscribe? As here are 10 WWE PG era entrance theme songs that will never be forgotten. The Curious Case of Alex Riley is one of someone who had all the tools to become a WWE main event player. Athletic, good-looking, and gifted with one of the PG era's most talked-about tunes, Friends of the Channel Downstates Say It to My Face. From the moment a Rye beat the heck out of his former boss, The Miz, and his tiny balls back in 2011, this pounding piece of entrance music immediately became a fan favorite amongst the WWE universe. Riley also started getting incredibly over as a babyface with this theme, getting huge pops every week. But then, just as quickly as it started, his career ended up fizzling out, depriving us the opportunity to hear this banger. You can look, but you can't touch. You keep dreaming on the stars above. Pretty much every Divas era WWE theme was about either being sexy, yeah baby, or wanted to date and make out with men. So when the PG era came along, the E had to scrap bra and panties matches and find a more conservative way of sports entertaining. <laughs> Uh, cue the Bella Twins. Unsuccessful in seizing spots in the 2006 Raw Diva search, the Bellas obviously caught the eyes of washed WWE execs and soon made their way onto the main roster in 2008. Turning heads on a nightly basis, their theme music was 100% Bella and pretty self-explanatory. You can look but you can't touch. Left a whole generation of horny little teenage boys with the bluest of blue balls. Cult of Personality is not CM Punk's best entrance theme ever. And while that might be considered blasphemy to some, especially this dude, let me drop a little knowledge on you for a minute. When Punk first arrived on WWE television, his straight edge personality was a breath of fresh air and the WWE Universe attached themselves to him in no time. The first sound of a blistering pick scrape at the beginning of This Fire Burns by Kill Switch Engage punches you in the face. Yes, in the face! While their lead says Singer belts out a primal scream that puts living color frontman Corey Glover to shame. Now you can disagree with me, that's fine. I just ask you to go back and watch Punk's 2011 Money in the Bank main event because you can't bang out a wrestling entrance much better than that. As his theme music reminds us, John Morrison ain't no make-believe. Hailing from sunny Los Angeles, the shaman of sex A exuded a Hollywood flash from his colorful slow motion entrances to his attention grabbing ring expertise. But there's more to Johnny Drip Drip than just his unique fashion sense. The prince of parkour, parkour looks exactly like the offspring of Doors lead singer Jim Morrison. However, his theme sounds almost exactly like Fire by Jimi Hendrix. And while Morrison was never quite able to break on through to the other side of the WWE main event scene, Scene, this theme lets the guru of greatness stand out as a tune that will always light our fire. When Cody became dashing Cody Rhodes, he not only needed to exfoliate his skin and wax his back a whole lot more, but he also needed a catchy theme to complement this new personality. Smoke and Mirrors, performed by New York musician Matt White, reflected all of Cody's narcissistic character traits. Prior to becoming the American Nightmare, Cody anointed himself as the best-looking man in the WWE, obsessed with his handsome and well-lotioned face that was as smooth as a newborn baby bottom. The Dashing One's theme went through a few variations. A Dr. Doom distorted remix during his masked phase and a jacked up rap rock version when he ditched the facial wear. But this tune right here remains one of his most popular.
Drew McIntyre's Broken Dreams theme left an indelible mark on the WWE Universe. Heck, it even left a lasting impression on the Scottish warrior himself, who has been hinting at its return for years. McIntyre's theme is a brooding trek that tells the story of broken dreams coming true and doing whatever it takes to make them a reality. Now, it all dates back to when Drew was but a wee lad, debuting as Vince McMahon's chosen one in 2007. McIntyre didn't get everything he wanted back then, so he reinvented himself into a much more chiseled and grizzled young veteran who's now been cracking Claymore kicks for years. And now that Vinnie Mac has finally retired, perhaps Drew can make his dream come true and bring this song back for a special occasion. Once Jeff Hardy got uber popular, he needed a new theme that captured the feel of his unbreakable spirit. Enter End Ever After, and their inspiring tune they ended up giving to the charismatic Enigma. Now there's no denying that No More Words as Hardy's entrance music truly fit Jeff like a pair of torn up gloves. When the song hits its stride, you can't help but sing along, play the air guitar, and gyrate and flail about like a maniac, maniac. The short-lived return of this banger when the WWE WWE officially ended the Thunderdome era in 2021 was a nice nostalgic twist of fate. However, Brother Nero was now chasing after the 24-7 championship, which neither sat well with him or his creatures of the night. But this track will forever slap. At one point in time, Mark Henry was legitimately the strongest man in the world. As a record-holding powerlifter, there are few superstars from any era of wrestling who can match the strength of a monster like Henry. And while the man once fathered a hand when he was known as Sexual Chocolate, during the PG era, the rap group 3-6 Mafia would encourage him to the ring with the chorus, beat him up, beat him up, break his neck, break his neck, supported by a rugged beat. Somebody's gonna get it is a hip-hop riot anthem. That rattled speakers while the silverback was busy inducting victims into his hall of pain because this theme song is a hall of fame caliber crunk bop The formation of the faction that would become known as the Nexus was a top five Monday Night Raw moment from the PG era. The rookies from the first ever season of NXT joined forces to interrupt the main event that night, destroying everything in their path, even the Dapper Yapper. The internet exploded and proved that when motivated, the WWE could still produce groundbreaking content. Over the next two months, the Nexus began using a theme that the kids would definitely refer to as a banger. The song was called We Are one by Louisiana rock band 12 Stones, and it perfectly demonstrated the group's unity, teamwork, and pack mentality. Such a happy, upbeat tune that said you're either Nexus or you're against us. Whatever the heck that means. It's a shame. How can you not love Seamus's old theme music? The iconic song, Written In My Face, will always be associated with the hilarious phrases, Too Many Limes, and Lobster Head. It really is a shameful thing that this song went away and has never returned. Personally, I love the intensity this song brings, along with the combination of the raw Irish tones and Celtic rock guitar and drums. However, poor fella has asked WWE higher-ups multiple times if he could bring this music back, but his requests have been unfortunately denied time and time again. But now that Vinnie Mac is out of the picture, perhaps the Celtic warrior will have a little luck of the Irish on his side. <laughs> 